This man breaks into a Ford supermarket wearing a cardboard box. Sound familiar? Probably saw it on our fucking show. Yeah. But Dum Dum decides, oh, this worked really well. So he decided he's going to rob the store three times in one night, same store. With a box on his head. Yeah. And on the third time, he was getting some cell phones, and when he turned around, he hit a fucking rack and knocked the box off his head. <laughs> his face is right on camera. So he totally did it because he saw you do that. I mean, you did it. It worked. I, I robbed. Think, I think I robbed a liquor store, didn't I? We robbed a liquor store. Bobby Boxhead. Bobby Boxhead. You did it, and you you did it the right way. So I mean, he did make it look easy. We didn't fucking rob it three times in one night, though. That's, yeah, that guy's just stupid. It's greedy. Talk. Fucking greedy. Bastard. You can't get greedy when you're pulling off like an Aaron Rodgers. Oh, this you is so just fucking in, easy. No one knows who I am. Get the Back. fuck out. Box yeah. off your head. Go to like a different, trap. different location, maybe different province or whatever, man. Yeah, I think that's his main problem. He should have had a chin strap. <laughs> he should have had a chin strap. You're right, man. Or he shouldn't have been robbing the store. There's another way to look at it. Yeah, fuck. Man's gonna eat. Speaking of eating, man, dude, the director for the Night of the Living Dead, George Romero. Yeah, Romero. George who? He got his start making short films for Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Can you nice. imagine that? How's he going to work for fucking George, George Romero. Romero, man? But what did he direct? Night of the Living Dead. Oh, really? The wall is fucking horrible. It talks a little like some flesh eating shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But he started out shooting Mr. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers shit. Imagine working for Mr. Rogers. I You'd want to get high every day, number one. Let's oh. go fucking get high. Oh, Mr. Mr. Rogers was fucking blasted for sure. No, he yes. wasn't, boys. You don't think he was high? Mr. Rogers did not smoke dope, boys. Did he drink? No. How do He's you know? He's Mr. fucking Rogers. He was on LSD then or something. There's no way you fucking do that. I don't know if he was on LSD, <laughs> man. Mr. Rogers was not on LSD. <laughs> don't think he was on LSD, man. <laughs> it would have been amazing if he was. I think if you watch the show while you're on LSD, it makes sense. There's all kinds of hidden messages, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. Holy fuck. Fergie, you know Fergie. Yeah. Yes. Hot. Back in the 80s, Charlie Brown's kid sister, she voiced it. Back in the 80s. Really? Who the fuck is Charlie Brown's kid sister? I didn't know yet. It's his kid sister. Yeah. Watch her, watch her name. So I thought it was Lucy. Sally, wasn't it? Sally? Oh, uh, maybe you're right. Wasn't it's Sally his time. kid sister? Sally's hot in real life. What? <laughs> Sally, you know, Fergie was the voice of Sally. Oh. I know you I'd have to rewatch some episodes. Yeah, Charlie Brown. He was one stupid bastard, wasn't he? He was fucked. He was always he was just a that fucking loser, man. Just always a bastard. I always pull that football out on him and he'd try to kick it every time, right on his back. Remember Peg Pen? He was a dirty bastard. He was a dirty bastard. You'd probably get flushing disease from him. You would get it. If Peg Pen bit you, <laughs> imagine if Peg Pen bit a chunk out of you. <laughs> you would have flesh eating disease. The fuck up. Would you rather have would you rather roll the dice and have Snoopy take a bite out of you or Peg Pen? Snoopy. Oh, Snoopy, man. Dog's about clean. Well, it's Except when they just finished licking their arses and their nuts. And they eat cat turds out of the fucking other box because that, they think they're snacks. They got clean mouths, though, man. Fucking stupid animals eating my cat turds, thinking they're treats. This California family was cleaning out this old house from their stepfather. Found one million pennies. It's a weird thing to fucking Fuck find. Man. A million pennies? How much money is that? Not much. Ten grand. Ten grand in pennies? But... They're old, old pennies, so they're actually still made of copper. So they're probably worth like more for the copper. Melt those motherfuckers down. If they're trying to sell them for twenty-five grand, but it's pain. Like they can't take them to the bank. The banks won't take them. It's too many fucking pennies, and they weigh them like a motherfucking ton of weight. In the car. Where did they find them? In a fucking crawl space. <coughs> they're down their hands and knees, pennies. crawling with these fucking million pennies in bank, <coughs> in actual bank bags. Why? What a fucking stupid thing to collect, man. Well, back then, Pennies. you know, Penny and Day and fucking the entire rich. Nope. nope, you fucking die and your pennies are in a crawl space. Although 10 grand 50 years ago was probably quite a bit of money. 
That was a lot of money 50 years ago, man. Probably like 100 grand. Did you hear about those poor fuckers, man? They were in the Cessna airplane, oh. crashed in the Amazon. That's an incredible jungle. story. Wow. Four kids, man. Youngest being one, oldest 13, I think. Yep, exactly. Actually, the youngest turned one while they were in the jungle. 40 fucking days. 40 days they survived. Mother Four kids. had to watch their mother die in front of them, which is bad enough because she's sitting there hanging out. The mother was dying. Dead. She said, you kids, you save yourselves. You fucking did. Fucking 40 did, man. days in the jungle. Well, that's going to be a movie, isn't it? Snakes. Let's write it. Let's see, let's see if we can write a movie. If I was, was uh, wait, was it just kids in the jungle? Just kids, just kids. For Holy and they fuck. had a fucking huge search and rescue team out after them, but you know. So they had to eat and drink for forty fucking days off the jungle for shit. But I guess one of the kids knew what plants to eat and stuff. How well, old were the fucking jungle, not the desert? The oldest kid was thirteen. I think there was like an eight or nine year old, and then like a five or six year old. A uh, one-year-old. They kept them alive. I don't know how the fuck the one-year-old survived. Cause it's not like either one of them are breastfeeding. Oh, I get feed the one-year-old bugs, man. Here, chomp on these fucking things. He doesn't know what the fuck. He's one. I guess. That's up sticking in his mouth. He'd yeah. be the easy one. Yeah, I guess they probably were feeding them bugs. Lived long off the bugs, man. And they would get water. That would be very Well, important. if they're gonna, like I said, if they're going to crash anywhere, except for this poisonous fucking... Snakes and whatnot. That would have been me. I would have probably been dead within an hour. I don't. You know what? No, man. I think you'd have <laughs> an been, hour. I think on. you'd be. You'd have. If anybody could survive, it'd be you, man. Maybe not an hour. <laughs> you'd be eating all kinds of weird shit, I, man. Fuck, I don't know. Maybe. But don't they got that frog? Never you'd, be lick, you'd be licking frogs. That's what. That's what you'd be I'd be rolling shit up and smoking it, and fucking dying. <laughs> <laughs> rolling up jungle leaves and smoking them. Just Boys, to see what would happen. We should go down the Amazon just like for a week. See if we can do a week. No. Man. I bet you someone would pay this, us like a hundred grand to go spend this like crazy two shit on the Amazon, man. We should do naked and afraid together. Why don't you you and Randy can go down there together and do that? We'll mm -hmm. fuck, get the Let's do oh, naked man. and afraid, boys. Together. Oh, four. Yeah. <laughs> three of us will get That's dropped it. off in the fucking Sahara Boys. Desert nude. The Sahara Desert. It's, it's yeah. Pieces, man. No fucking well, way. I mean, we might as well take it up a notch if you're talking about going to the Amazon. Let's play for real. This is... Let's get you stripped what if down. You had, like, imagine a burnt knob for fucking like, two weeks straight. Come on. I've had a burnt this knob for two shit. weeks straight. No, when, when, when did that happen? When I was welding the current that time and I set the torch down. You burnt your knob? Yes. I'm talking about sun stroke oh. on your knob. <laughs> Sunstroke on well, your you knob. Know what I mean. oh, fuck no, we're not doing that. All right. Do you want to hear some crazy fucking people that survive crazy falls with no parachute? Oh, we met that one guy that did that, bigger fella. Ju that Julianne dude? cockpit. Ten thousand feet. Ten thousand. Yep. Yeah. She was flying on a flight. Plane got hit by lightning, broke apart. She was still strapped to her seat. <laughs> the way she lay in the jungle crashing all these little canopies and shit. Oh, fucking yeah, me. man. That's like a Rambo move. Survived. Broken collarbone. Concussion. Everyone else in the plane, dead. Wow, and she rode her seat down? <laughs> yeah, 10,000 feet. What a fucking <laughs> ride that would be. <laughs> that would have been like, fuck. Me, man. So, Was she, like, conscious the whole time? Just go, no. no. No? No. She just woke up. She was in, in her air. seat in the jungle. In the yeah. jungle. Oh, you imagine enough. you're flying along, enjoying your movie, having your snack, and then you wake up in the jungle in your seat. <laughs> and everyone else is dead. Awesome. awesome. Well, that would suck. suck. Guess who else? Ooh. Vera Grylls. Didn't know this. Are you fucking kidding me? 16,000 feet. Parachute didn't open. 16,000? Yeah. That's high. And then he was going to deploy his backup. Did you say that's hot? High. Oh. He was spinning and couldn't get his fucking backup to deploy. Deploy. He ended up landing on his back on the fucking backup chute. Shattered three vertebrae, and that was it. What did, he, what did he hit, feet. though? Jesus. Just the ground. Just the ground. But the impact is oh. his chute was back there. It must have been soft oh, ground not, or something. That's like a fucking hello, man. It's pretty fucking lucky. He's like a superhero, man, that guy. That's a, quite an impact at 16,000 feet. You're going, what, terminal velocities, how fast? Did he have any chute dangling out? Miles to... an hour or something, 
Did he have any kind of shoot dangling to slow him down? Oh, his original one must have, yeah. Must have helped a bit. Must have slowed him down a bit, because you can't hit the ground going terminal velocity. He'll explode like a grape. That's what it said. Your hurt's supposed to stop on impact. I would think so. Nicholas Alchemy, 18,000 feet. He was a tail gunner. He fucking, his plane broke apart. He fell out of it. Landed some fluffy pine trees and some deep snow. Broke his fucking, sprained his ankle. That was it. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's insane from 18,000 feet. Fuck. Oh, man. Shot no. out of the back of a fucking airplane while he was in a war. Tail gunner. Alan McGee, another tail gunner. His plane came apart. Shredded his parachute. Crashed through, through a glass window at a railway in France, but he was he was pretty fucked up. And he had 28 shrapnel wounds, broken nose, collapsed lungs, lost an eye, kidney was fucked, broke both of his arms, broke both of his legs, but he fucking survived. But he lived. Didn't your uh, grandmother used to bang a tail gunner that was in the war? No. Couldn't have survived? No. I thought she used to bang this dude that was uh, shooting planes down from the tail of fucking... B-52 or something. No. Oh, and this is another cocksucker. I no, your grandmother... jobs or anything? Your just... grandmother's nickname was Tail Gunner because she used to... You know, she had that whole arse thing she liked to do. <laughs> uh, Ivan Chisoff, 23,000 feet. He was a bomber pilot, got shot down. He jumped out. He didn't want to deploy his chute right away because he didn't want to get shot. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'll just do it when I'm close to the ground. Fucking passed it. Never got to open it. Hit the ground at 150 miles an hour, <clears throat> threw some soft pine trees and some snow, which saved his cunt, and then he rolled down a fucking hill to the, to the bottom of it. <coughs> it's stop all about what Stop, stop drop, and roll. Yeah, if he's like on an incline, maybe that helped him out. Like a insane. skier. You know oh, yeah, I mean? an incline will absorb 150 the energy. 23,000 feet, and he fucking survived. Yeah. I've heard of people hitting, like, barn roofs and, you know, shooting off them like that way. It absorbs the energy and redirects you out. Those guys should have bought a lottery ticket, eh? <laughs> ah. Remember people to say that? And this other girl, Vesna Voluvik. 33,000 feet, she has the world record. 33,000 30, 30, feet? feet. Yeah, That's a, full airliner fucking She was a well, she was, uh, airliner, full blast. Bomb went off in the luggage compartment. She was trapped in the tail section, pinned under her food cart. And the plane, the plane split in half. Everybody else died. She crashed in deep snow. Fractured skull. Both legs broken, three vertebrae, pelvis shattered, no memory of it, but she survived. 33,000 okay. feet. So, so, so she the fell out of the plane? She was yeah. inside the plane? Yeah. And she was trapped with her fucking food cart. Yeah, so and, and the rest of the plane was gone, so it was just this tail section falling by it. Free ah, so not side. only you in a shitty situation, you're trapped in a shitty situation, you know what I'm saying? So she was in the plane when it hit, or she fell out and... No, a bomb went off, so she's just in the tail section, just this little tiny piece of the plane. Fallen full speed. Wow. Uh, she crashed in deep snow and saved her ass. Jesus, fucking lucky people, Fucking right. I kind of want to try it now. <laughs> I'm going to say this to you again, Ricky. If you were to fall out of a plane, I bet you you would fucking survive. Would I? I bet what you would. You, would got that, you got that kind of luck, man. I'm ah, trying. you would just hit something, Ricky, like you'd land in a bucket, of, like a big, the old Kentucky Fried chicken bucket that's up on the pole or something. I think I'd try to, like, dive down and then when I get closer, try to arc it a little bit and just skid right across the water. See, I, that's what I'm talking about. You could make, you'd be falling, you'd have some, you'd have a wave of rolling well, a Richie, joint. how would you arc it? How would he'd you be do rolling that? a joint and smoking a joint on his way down and be like, all right, bring it on, motherfucker. <laughs> and he'd land and be okay. Well, you just open up your coat like a squirrel suit. See? Shit like that would save him, man. Hopefully I never have to do it, he wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't do it on purpose, but if I was in the situation, the biggest thing is stay calm. <laughs> try to get high. Try, try not to think about your free falling with no fucking parachute, because that'll freak you out. Did you see the guy that jumped out of the plane without a parachute on purpose? Yeah. No. Oh. No he parachute. landed in a net. He landed in a net. Crazy motherfucker. You have to be fucking bananas to do that. Yeah, that would be fucked. Okay, who's crazier? That motherfucker or Evil Knievel when he jumped the fucking canyon? That takes a fucking set of... There's two, different, large that's testicles. two different kind of crazy. One, I think the Evil buddy... Evil Knievel had that. large testicles. They were some of the biggest on record. They, they're in the Smithsonian, I believe. 
you serious? I think evil can evil's testicles are at the Smithsonian, aren't they? Archie Bunker's chair is. Yeah, but I can understand the chair, but evil can evil's nuts. <laughs> You'd think maybe his helmet. What would they be in? Gloves or something. Oh, I think they're in displayed. <laughs> <laughs>